Well, in this year, this upcoming budget, we face an even more daunting task. It's $126 million, roughly, that we're in the hole. And as you know, we have to have a balanced budget, which means that we have to do some really, really tough choices. Um, I committed when I ran, and I still hold this, that we would hold the line on public safety and education. Um, at a time when surrounding jurisdictions are giving out raises to teachers, both the district, Montgomery County, and Fairfax County are giving out raises, um, we're trying to be, remain competitive. Uh, we don't want to be the training ground for public safety uh, workers, and we don't want to be the training ground for our education uh, system. We want people to stay here. And we want the workers in, throughout the county who do a terrific job to remain here. So we got some tough choices. Um, the state of the state today, the governor talked about shifting the pension for teachers down to the county. That could mean in addition to the $126 million budget gap we have to close, um, we could find ourselves faced with another 40 to $80 million uh, coming here with no revenue stream on how we would pay for it. Uh, so these are very um, tough times for us in terms of dealing with the problems. But they're good times. As you know here in the southern part of the county, this is, has the potential to be the economic boom. You see it already. Um, we think there are, there are opportunities in Prince George's County that, we, that other jurisdictions don't have. We have some of the most undeveloped metro sites in the region, which means that at a time when people are looking at transit-oriented development, we're the place that we think folks will turn to, businesses will turn to, um, to grow here. Uh, the realignment, the BRAC realignment at Andrews Air Force Base is going to bring a lot of uh, opportunities to the county. So there's opportunities with the crisis. I I'll close on this. Last year we were pleased when we came down to this end of the county, and not only did you tell us what you wanted to keep um, in the budget, but you also gave us your ideas on how to help us. You know, we don't pretend like we, I certainly don't pretend like I have all the answers. We're looking for ideas. And we were able to walk away with a lot of the ideas which we were going to capture today um, that, that helped us, you know, not only keep funding in, in our library system, but ideas on how we could redirect funding. And so we want to hear that also. So my name is Ken Bryson. I'm the president of the Friends of the Akakeek Library, and I'd like to speak not only about our branch, but about the library system as a whole. The library system has been cutting expenses heavily since 2008 by freezing 30 positions, no salary increases since 2008, and a 17% cut in material spending, cutting hours by 20%, including eliminating Sunday hours. There is no further way to cut unless we close some branches and lay off staff. This would have to be negotiated with the employees' unions, and in addition, it would be difficult to justify closing branches when a brand new library branch is due to open in South Bowie in July 2012. Our branch, the Akakeek Branch Library, provides two story times each week for preschoolers. We provide visits to do story times at daycares in our community. We have a chess club for all ages. Monthly, we provide adult book discussion, a teen book discussion, in which 21 teens have asked to read Charles Dickens' novels throughout the year. We have a literature around the world children's book discussion uh, with uh, 65 children ages 7 to 12. We study literature from around the world. We have a speaker from that particular country to answer questions and then taste snacks from the country being studied. Oh. We provide book talks and story times to public and private schools in our community. We're available to speak with community and civic groups about the library. We all work hard to provide the best service possible to our customers. We continually hear praise from our customers 
about our programs. We serve over 400 homeschool families who tell us they would not be able to do all they do without the library's help. The story times enable preschoolers to be ready for school and to begin reading. In addition, our computers at the branch library are in use constantly, not only by school children doing school projects, but by adults doing job searches and research. So it's important to maintain the level of funding that we have so that we continue these good services to our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Sarah Cabot, and I have lived in Port Washington for 35 years. I am speaking as a private citizen, and I thank you for the opportunity to comment on the 2013 budget. There apparently exist poss future possibilities for revenue enhancements, taxes, or some other revenue stream. We understand that when we are in deficit. However, before we as citizens commit to or fully support these propo proposals, we need to be fully assured that every line item in the budget is absolutely necessary and fully transparent. I'm a big believer in transparency. Your transition report states a group will be created to evaluate all existing contractual obligations. These should be publicly listed, explained, and enumerated. All NGOs, nonprofits, and contracts that receive taxpayer monies need to be justified. I would like to know if that group has been formed and has a report been developed. Your transition report also states the county should be greener. The police district seven station should be LEED Silver certified. That was assured to the pe members of the public when they had a meeting. I'd like to know if the Office of Sustainability within DER has been formed. And yes, if yes, who is the director? The transition report also refers to public engagement and transparency. I'd like to know the status of the county stat program and the 311 project. I do appreciate your allowing me to speak and I also believe that any project charges to any other government agency should be completely phased out by the fiscal year 2015. I thank you very much and I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we also, in the beginning of the administration, we talked about this, went through all the contracts that were, uh, that were throughout the government and uh, just to make sure. So we, we did that, we've got the website up the Office of Sustainability we are working on, so hopefully that's one of the um, initiatives that we kick off this year in, in 20, uh, 2012, so we are working on that. Uh, 311, which we talked about at a senior staff meeting, should be up this year, so we'll kick off of that. And um, I, I think the others, if you find that this government, one of the things that we have tried to do is make sure that uh, everything we do is as open to the public as possible, and I think that, uh, you know, given everything that we've been through, we've done that. So, but we will work on these issues, and um, we will let you know how we're doing. Thank you. The Merlin National Capital Park and Planning Commission states partnership with our citizens, the Department of Parks and Recreation provides comprehensive park and recreation programs, facilities, and services which respond to changing needs within our community. We strive to preserve, enhance, and protect our open spaces to enrich the quality of life for present and future generations in a safe and secure environment. The Sports and Learning Center complex is currently under construction and be appreciative if a swimming pool could be included in the budget. Currently, residents in this area have to drive quite a distance to make use of a swimming facility. This is due to <coughs> renovations within this area. Would you please give serious consideration of allocating funds in your budget to enhance the sports and learning complex in this area? I'm speaking as an individual. I thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on budget priorities for Prince George's County's fiscal year 2013. My name is Lori Arguez, 
and I have the privilege of leading the Alice Ferguson Foundation, which has been delivering environmental education programs to students in Prince George's County for nearly 50 years. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the chair of our board, Mike Herman. So let me begin by thanking County Executive Baker and the members of the Prince George's County Council for their support of our Potomac Watershed Study Center, which we estimate will bring more than 200 construction-related jobs to Prince George's County. And since the center is part of the next generation of green buildings, this will be an important opportunity for those in the industry to learn and embrace new design and construction concepts that will have benefits to them for years to come. Every aspect of this facility will be transparent to students and our adult visitors, and we will employ its technology as a teaching tool for the thousands of students who participate in our programs each year. Through this project, Prince George's County will be a national leader in the growing trend for living buildings. And in taking on this living building challenge, we will demonstrate that it is possible to construct buildings that improve the environment with no net water or energy consumption, that breathe out cleaner air than they take in, and use the natural resources of the land in sustainable and eco-friendly ways. The center is also designed to be carbon neutral, and we estimate that we will mitigate 168 tons of CO2 annually, which is the equivalent of the annual emissions of nearly 50 cars. Why set the bar so high? Well, at the Alice Ferguson Foundation, we truly embrace our mission of environmental stewardship. It's why we are the Trash Free Potomac Watershed Initiative and why we seek to remove sources of trash from our precious waterways. Thank you, County Executive Baker, for your leadership and thoughtfulness in that regard as well. And it's also why we serve every high school student in state and national parks throughout our Bridging the Watershed program. We take every opportunity to connect with the natural world and our dedication extends to our facilities. We appreciate the commitment of funds to date and respectfully request the final round of funding that will allow us to complete this project. Good evening, uh, Mr. Baker and the Good evening. Budget Committee. Uh, I bring these greetings to you uh, from the Friends of the Oxford Hill Library. Some background about our Friends group is as follows. We are a nonprofit group dedicated to promoting the library in the community, stimulating support for the library, and participating in sponsoring special programs and events for teens and youth served by the library and the community. Every dollar collected from membership dues, book sales, and charitable donations is given to the Oxen Hill Library. We have aided the library by sponsoring various programs that are both educational and entertaining to the community, as well as assisted the library by purchasing items that are not covered in the library's normal operating budget. And as this committee is having uh, this hearing today to discuss additional decisions that will affect our library, I'm here today to state our case as to why any further de de decreases in our budget impacts the entire Oxford Hill community. We understand that the county, uh, county is undergoing fiscal cha challenges that leave you little choice but to recommend decreases in your budget in areas that will allow you to sustain other relevant programs and activity. However, we are reaching out to you to state our case on the impact that your impending decisions will have on the Oxford Hill Library community. The people of Oxen Hill depend on our library in various ways, and we need our library hours to stay open during the time schedule now so that our community can utilize the facility as long as possible during each day that the library is open. Since the digital divide still exists, the closure of our library on Sundays may have done more harm than we could calculate. I am not aware of any assessments that uh, were done to determine how the reduction in hours in the, uh, of the library has affected student performance, especially from those students whose families may not have a computer at home, where those students could do their homework when the library's hours have been cut back already. Bookstores are closing, but libraries must remain open so that all who do not share our love for libraries have the opportunity to frequent these public facilities to seek information on job opportunities, research areas or topics, that will enhance one's knowledge during non-school hours and participate in programs that will keep today's teens and youth focused on keeping our students at an academic level above other nations. Everyone is now expected to do their part in making sacrifices during the county's current 
uh, economic uh, situation. However, the, decreases, the decreasing more services that are offered by our library will create a burden on the community to keep pace with other communities or counties that have sought other solutions to make up their budget shortfalls rather than affect the operations uh, of their library. Today, we ask you to consider performing an assessment on the impact that reduced hours will have on each community. And I thank you all for your time today. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Good evening. Baker and members of the, uh, the county. My name is Robert Council, and I'm the president of the River Bend uh, Neighborhood Association. We, uh, we, uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to come and to participate and show what our, some of our concerns. We think this is a good process, and we, we appreciate that you're, that you're doing that. We would just like to, you to know that we have two ongoing uh, concerns, and they are the we had a District 7 police station, adequately staffed. We were taking bets how long it would take before. <laughs> yes. The Oxen Hill, uh, the Oxen Hill uh, second lane, two lane uh, project, road project. Because Check, Obi. <laughs> so I'm delighted to see that these are uh, reaching some cords. And we do have other concerns, and they are typical community type of concerns. I'm sure you have addressed those in the budget. That's safety, investment in the school, the classroom situation, properly staffing, and uh, uh, police, and, and economic development that would create jobs. I'm sure you've already thought about all of those. But those, are, those are concerns that we have in, in the community, and we know that you're, you're working on. While these are kind of general, we, we have the opportunity to participate in a general term. We, we think we could have been a little bit more meaningful to you in the process if, if the budget could have been published in advance. In other words, we could have gotten it in summary format where the revenue and the expenses would have been displayed in summary format showing the historical uh, performance, what it was last year, the year before that, what it is now, and with that type of information, if we could really come back to you and, and embrace ourselves, access what the impact is going to be. And there is going to be an, uh, an impact with a $126 million deficit. There is going to be an impact. We can brace ourselves for that and prepare the community and become more of a partnership with you in this effort. We know the cuts are coming. We want to brace for them. We want to be a partner with you. And if we, if we have all the information, we could do that. If we suggest information could be put out in an internet format or you could send it directly to the organizations in the community, and that way we can help you become a real partner there. This way, we really would do away with a lot of the superficiality about the budget, the concept, the perception. The perception, when I talk to people in my organization, they don't want to get involved in the budget because the decisions have already been made. That's the attitude that we have to work through. Well, with full disclosure, a lot of that could be clicked in. Again, we thank you for your service and leadership, and thank you for the opportunity to participate. Uh, before the process is completed, is to get your advice. This is an opportunity. So you really are. So for those folks who, um, um, in the association, who think the decisions have already been made, you proved that last year. Some of the very decisions and suggestions you made, we took back and we incorporated into the budget that we submitted to the, uh, um, to the council. So this is a, a great opportunity to tell us, you know, where the priorities are because it, it's our county and we're going to make decisions on, on that. So there is going to be another opportunity once we look at it and we'll submit our budget to the council. The council will then look at it and you'll have another opportunity to weigh in. And I think March 15th it goes. It's, it's our budget submission and then it will be online or how is it available? It'll be, it'll be up online as uh, soon as that, uh, after that date. But thank you very much. I come before you today requesting the restoration of the LEAP backing program in the county's fiscal year 2013 budget. The program was discontinued under the previous administration's term in 2009. We feel the county handled the discontinuation of the program poorly by just cutting it with no explanation to the county residents. We were completely unaware of the discontinuation of this program until mid-November of 2009 when signs were posted at the entrance of our development. 
After further investigation through the county's website, I did discover a letter on the Department of Public Works and Transportation's website dated July 2009 from Dr. Hijazi briefly explaining that it was discontinued due to budget cuts. The letter was never distributed to county residents when the decision was made or before the decision was made so that we could have any input as to what our tax dollar funds or don't fund. All county residents received was an abrupt 11th hour unexplainable notice at each community entrance in the height of leaf season. When the program was created 25 years ago, we were told that the leaf collection costs would be offset by the county's mulch purchase program. We were also led to believe that this was part of the county's initiative to be environmentally friendly and going green by not bagging leaves in environmentally unfriendly plastic. The loss of this program has created numerous problems within the county, including but not limited to putting storm drains at risk of flooding onto streets from areas that are not private property, along with additional street trash that is buried in leaves that are not collected. We reached out to Mr. Johnson's administration to find out where the bag leaves were going, whether they were going into landfills or where, but our letters were ignored and our questions went unanswered. I come to you today not just with complaints, but with solutions on how we could re-implement this at minimal cost to the county. We feel that with the recycling that the county does now, the success that we've made over the last five to 10 years, there is not as great a need for trash pickup twice a week and uh, since more trash is being recycled. We would recommend that trash collection be reduced to once a week and the funds saved there be used to offset the leak back in program. We ask that you respectfully Consider our request and afford us the same convenience as every other county in the metropolitan area is receiving. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Good evening. I'm Julia Baltimore and I live at 9020 Mill Street, Fort Washington. And tonight, come before you with some needs for South County. All right. And uh, number one, a swimming pool for the new constructed technology, sports technology complex that is being constructed on Bach Road. Outside lights for Tucker Road complex and the tennis court. It's a little dark when you go down for meetings in the evening. We'd like to see a bridge that goes over Tucker Road to go to the sports fields. Tucker Road is a little risky if you have to walk. Allocations for funds to help maintain property and equipment at Bach Road Maintenance. We support District 7 Police Station. Please allocate money for public works projects such as roads, streets, sidewalks, tree trimming, street lighting, or whatever needs in community. And last but not least, economic development to support jobs. Persons looking for work need to have something to make a living on. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm June White Dillard. I'm representing Costa of Maryland this evening. And we recognize that you need to make some very serious financial decisions in the budget for 2013. However, there is an underserved and marginalized population whose needs have to be met. The county has been very generous in funding our Welcome Center in Langley Park, and that Welcome Center has been able to produce uh, $1 million in terms of wages for the people who have come there looking for work. We have 500 workers who came to the center and found a job, 349 new employers who are coming to the center uh, to hire our workers and 459 who are returning employees. This is really a very critical place for the immigrant community in the county, and we hope that you will give it priority. We support your maintenance of effort for the Prince George's County Public School System 
and we hope that you could do more than just give them money. Uh, but we know that that is a, a task to be determined on a long-range basis. We support economic development and a living wage. The county council did pass the bill for a living wage several years ago, but we need more jobs that have a living wage for the workers in Prince George's County. We thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. The IAC Board of Directors supports adoption by the county of the functional equivalent of zero-based budgeting, which requires that budget requests be justified in detail by each division manager, starting from a zero base. Every item in the budget needs to be examined, what it is and why it is. Rich Georges County nominally has a performance-based budget, yet there is little or no evidence that any agency has ever been held accountable for what it does and what it doesn't do. Monies routinely are allocated to agencies year in and year out, with no accountability for whether those taxpayers' dollars are spent wisely or effectively. A major source of taxpayer distrust is the absence of transparency. IAC urges the adoption of a data-driven performance management system by county staff to be implemented in such a manner that taxpayers can see where every dime is being spent, whether programs, salaries, contracts, procurements, grants, whatever, should be available online. The goal is not only to assure that the always scarce taxpayers' dollars are being spent where they'll be most effective, but also to assure that citizens can see that happening. IHAC strongly supports the findings and recommendations of the Accountability, Compliance, and Integrity Advisory Board to create an independent office of the Inspector General, which meets the standards of the National Association of Inspectors General. In testimony before the ACI Advisory Board, it was estimated that $800,000 would be the minimum annual budget required for the county to fund the creation and operation of an IG office at a startup level. An independent IG is both needed and would pay for itself long term in ferreting out fraud, waste, and abuse. The IHAC board urges the county executive and the county council to develop and implement a pattern of formal employee innovation incentive program which would reward employees for innovative ideas which save the county money. Many jurisdictions have such programs under many different names, but essentially an employee gets a, gets a percentage, typically 10%, of the money saved as a reward for budget-saving ideas. For example, if changing procurement procedures saved $1 million a year, the employee would get a one-time award of $100,000. There's an urgent need for Prince George's County to practice effective code enforcement. Department of Environmental Resources has much of the responsibility for code enforcement, but has a dismal record of doing so. The failure to enforce community standards and permitting results and significant losses of revenue to the county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the idea of the budget saving uh, incentive program and or good ideas, innovative ideas, I like that. And I think it's something that we're considering. I don't, can't see Brad Seaman for the cameraman, but um, I know that he is, uh, he is taking that under consideration as one of the ideas, actually, uh, in one of our executive meetings someone came up with. So that's a, that's a really good one. Uh, we certainly are in conversations with the county council on the recommendations. Um, you, you threw out a figure here, and, and you're absolutely correct. No matter what we decide, it's going to have an impact on the budget. And so... Um, we will be working with the county council to, uh, to implement the recommendations um, and come up with the best, best alternatives for the county and uh, be able to handle it fiscally. Uh, county stat, it is a program we have been working on. Uh, we are excited about launching it, excited about having the, um, uh, the, the county residents see uh, county stat and, and its help. And um, we think it's going to be terrific in, in measuring and monitoring and data-driven. And, and so we're excited about that. And Brad Seaman uh, is taking the lead on that. And I, I should say this about the budget. Each department, each agency must come into uh, the executive staff and after meeting with our budget office and justify every dollar that they spend and go through it. And we go through it you know, line by line, everything that they have in there to measure, in, in fact, um, 
to make sure that those dollars that we allocate of citizens money uh, is spent appropriately and we will continue to do that and we will continue to monitor, monitor the uh, progress that they're making. Um, so we're going to take these under consideration, the new ones, and we will um, we look forward to, uh, to your keeping an eye on us. Thank you. That approximately 50% of the people in Prince George's County is traveling outside of Prince George's County to go to work yeah. on any given day. One thing that they have done in Europe, uh, you, I don't know how old a lot of people are in this room, but uh, I'll be dated and say it. I remember CHIPS, uh, California Highway Patrol. Okay, so <laughs> you put the numbers where you want to put the numbers. But one initiative that they've used in Europe, and now they're using Dade County, Florida, is called MERT. And what that is, is Medical Emergency Response Team. What that does is to use the CHIPS concept Harley Davis would donate uh, motorcycles, and medical teams will be used to, to go through the congestion on 210, mm. on, on, on the Beltway or elsewhere where there's highway congestion. During times when there's a traffic accident, when you know you can't get the large apparatuses there, and they will actually get there, the purpose of them getting there at a more rapid pace is to stabilize the victim. And at that time, it, they will stabilize the victim and they will allow uh, that the person to be abstracted from there at, a, at another time, depending on when a helicopter or whatever may arrive. But the concept is, how fast can we get to a, a, an accident victim? Do this congestion. And the, again, the Dade County, they use this practice, and it's, uh, we dubbed it as being MERC, uh, just to use an acronym, but it's medical individuals, uh, emergency medical individuals that actually ride motorcycles, and they have all their medical equipment on those motorcycles, and they can actually get through the traffic, get to the victim, stabilize the victim, and, 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 and be there until that victim is abstracted. It's a concept that's been used, and I'm not gonna take 30 more seconds, but it's the fact that it's, it's useful for the county. What I would like to see, I would like to see a pilot program done down here, where, you know, now I know it's seasonal, it's seasonal. In, in Florida, you can use it year-round because the weather, but it's something that's interesting and it's been used again in Europe and now used in Dade County. Thank you for an opportunity to speak and it's just an idea for Prince George's County. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, my name is Dottie Cresilius. I'm the president of the, uh, the Friends of the Baden Library. Um, our particular uh, branch has been in existence for 40 years. I have been a lifelong resident of the Baden area, and when I was a young girl, I remember when the branch came to our community and how much it meant to us. Um, currently, though, our particular branch has very limited hours. Um, we're happy to have a library, um, but we're hoping that with all of the budget issues um, that are up against the county that our particular branch isn't, isn't sacrificed for that. We actually had hoped at one point that we could expand our library because we do um, serve a, a rural faction of our county and it really does mean a lot to our, commu our, our community. Our, uh, we have no weekend hours, uh, we have no evening hours, but we do have children's programs and a very, very um, uh, supportive community and, and friends group for being a very small branch. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope you um, help us out. Thank you. Thank you. I am Victoria Brock, a citizen of, of Prince George's County, and one of your employees as a major on the Prince George's County Police Department. Thank you for your fine work on the uh, police department. And in that respect, I was wondering if because I've been in the police department for 28 years, but I don't know everything. As you stated, you know, sometimes you have to call on others. And I would also like to know if there is a means for someone, an employee of the county government, to report waste or mismanagement of funds. And if not, I would like to make that suggestion that we put it into maybe uh, at a website where you could report anonymously, and as the gentleman said, or get an inspector general that is outside of the agencies. But my real reason for being here tonight is 
so that I can speak to you again as I did last year, reference the Boys and Girls Club and Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assaults. And I'll make it very short. If we support the Boys and Girls Clubs, we will impact on our crime and we will impact on our kids' education and we will impact on weight. Uh, you know, they say Americans are overweight. I am myself, but you know. <laughs> uh, but I think that if we keep the Boys and Girls Clubs going, we'll be doing a great deed for our young people. And if we fund or can shift funds to the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault, we will um, actually impact upon two of your and I believe the governor's priorities, which is violence against women and children. Because uh, as we all know, that if sexual assault occurs, it not only impacts that individual, it impacts, it impacts their families, it impacts their work environment, and our community as a whole. So if you could steer um, funds towards organizations that have been there for a while, and that are actually doing things that are positive and that actually can make a difference, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do want to say that I believe that the library is a very good return on investment. When you look at the fact that we had 4.5 million visitors in 2011, we had 9,000 students who participated in our summer read program, which was a 15% increase over the previous year, and we're looking to double that number this year. We have been able to go to back to school nights in most of the schools in Prince George's County because literacy is so vitally important to Prince George's County because we have a school system that has some challenges. And those people, because I really want to take a moment to say thanks to Kathleen Tease with regards to her leadership and her efforts to make Prince George's County library system the jewel in the state of Maryland. But, she's fabulous, fabulous. but also I just want to be able to say that in looking at our renovation, some of the things that we've done is that we have made sure that we're looking to bridge the digital divide, particularly in the inner beltway communities that do not have the computers to be able to be competitive with those communities in the outside Beltway areas. We've had in our Spalding branch where we had just a new renovation, we placed 30 new computers in there which doubled the number from the previous year. And we're also looking to make sure that we're helping those individuals who come in looking for services such as writing resumes, looking for jobs. And it's, it's just critical it is so critical that we continue to support early childhood literacy. That'll make a difference because if our kids can read, they can succeed. I know you're a staunch advocate of public safety and education. We are just hoping that there will be no further cuts to the library and we're actually, since we're asking and hoping and wishing that you will be able to provide some additional funding for us and with that, we're also going to try and create a foundation where we can make sure that we can do a reaching out to our businesses to help support our library system. And I'm hoping that everyone will take an opportunity to look at businesses or corporations that might be able to sponsor us because, like I said, I believe that the Prince George's County library system is a good return on investment. Thank you so Thank you. much. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Good evening. My name is Dr. Bridge Bargava, and I am really, I have to commend you for coming down and bringing your staff. I've been here for so many years, but I have never seen somebody bringing staff to acquaint themselves what exactly transpires in the people's mind. They were serving. so excited about coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody has talked a lot of things, so I don't think I'm, I would like to touch those things, but still coming back to the basics and then I'll have three, more, three points which I'll bring up. Number one, that everybody talks about the budget deficits and you said even the state is dumping retirement system and these things. Now coming back to 
I, I did work for federal government, state government, institutions, and industry. The, the problem is that the, you have to deal with the federal regulations, state regulations, and then come down to your county regulations. Now, what I would like to bring it to everybody's attention is redundancy. That how many times, just like in, in government, if FDA does the same thing, USDA does, does the same thing, EPA does, there's a lot of you know, overlapping and, and, and uh, redundancy. So it, at the county level, I, I'm sure there are certain things that people, you know, when they draw the line and, and they cannot cross the line, how much redundancy is there. So to make it more efficient, if that part can be checked, number one. Number two, just like Mr. President brought to everybody's notice that the milk was classified as oil. So if there are regulations which are a century, I mean 50 years old or a decade old, which, are, which have become useless, I think people in your staff should sit down and review those as well as when they implement the regulations, they should keep both aspects in mind to increase the efficiency. And I think if the efficiency increases, that the county gets, does better, I think the progress will take place and, and revenues and everything will change. Just like school system or whatever system you, you name it, I think if they are more efficient, they, pro, they do better and people appreciate and, and, and come and live in that part where the things are much better. That's what I want to tell you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Good. Good evening, Mr. Baker and everyone else. My name is uh, Tommy Makula. I live in Akakik and uh, uh, first of all, I would uh, like to uh, suggest one area where I, I beg you to cut something, cut my services, and I, I am referring to what somebody already suggested here, the, the trash collection service. It really uh, is just, I mean, I know we have a lean budget, not a lot to cut, but there's one little piece of fat that's just hanging there, right there, that you can just, just cut it off. Uh, I've lived in many uh, other communities, Never have I been in a community where I get uh, the, the fabulous twice a week trash collection. Those other communities are just lovely, clean places, and, and my son used to go to brand new schools in those communities. So I, I, think, uh, I think that's definitely one area where you can, uh, where you can cut. And I understand with the, the money going to a fund that there are some limits what you can do with the, with the fund, but clearly, for example, the, uh, you talked about some sustainability initiative that you may have. Uh, those types of things, I assume, uh, the, the leaf collection, uh, I think those could be surely funded uh, through that fund. And, and if, if you so wish, you could even lower my taxes, just for that. <laughs> um, uh, then, uh, related to the um, budget priorities, just very briefly, I do think uh, schools and public safety, they have to be top priorities. I agree also that economic development is a very high priority. I want to have more taxpayers here, and especially businesses. But I do think even business development, all, all your other efforts are going to be in vain if we fail when it comes to schools and public safety. You just know. I moved here a couple of years ago, and that was a big question. Am I going to move? And, and those were big considerations. We kind of took a leap of faith, and I, I hope you, uh, you pay us back for that uh, leap of faith. Um, and just very briefly related to uh, economic development, I just really haven't had time to look into this, but uh, the National Harbor is a great development in the, in the South County, and uh, I don't know if there are plans for long-term plans, probably going to cost you any money right now to, to look into getting a metro there, and uh, that would also service the South County nicely because Branch uh, Avenue Station is a bit far for us and, and the other stations. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, our next hearing will be on February 7th at the Community College. So if you did not get a chance to, uh, to express your views here tonight, please uh, come out and tell your friends. My, believe me, my uh, executive staff and the directors love when you show up. So that's why they're here, to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Drive safely.